At approximately 11 p.m., without warning, CCNY President Vincent Bedro requested the NYPD to enter the encampment to arrest students and faculty. He claimed to do this in the interest of student safety because students and workers united protesting posed a safety risk. Protesters stood their ground as SRG officers came in with their batons and their mace. They stood in their ground as they swarmed and viciously attacked them. SRG police broke the ankle of an un undergraduate student, broke the teeth of two protesters, attacked and burned many students, faculty, and at least one journalist with pepper spray at close range. And they beat many more with batons. Legal observers were denied entry. And amongst some of the very first people to be arrested was a faculty member who had been in negotiations with the president and the vice chancellor moments ago. 173 arrests were made at City College, a university that champions brown and black students, that uses the labor of brown and black students to advance its reputation, a university of the people that is supposed to be for the people. And as officers made their way into campus, an autonomous of brave students managed to occupy the finance office of Howard E. Administration Building in a final act of resistance. The students held the building for over an hour until they were violently removed and arrested. We salute those brave autonomous students and we salute each and every single person standing up to this genocidal machine. We remind the larger community that we are protesting not to assert our First Amendment rights, but we are protesting to end this genocide. We are protesting to call for a dismantling of Zionism, which includes complete divestment. That's right. <laughs> SRG violence is not new to us. It is not novel. We are accustomed to these threats of intimidation. We are accustomed to this violence. And we know that it is an attempt to plant fear in our hearts but we remind students all over the globe that together we are stronger than they are. Foremost, we're here to show solidarity with the students who've been um, arrested and gone after for protesting the genocide in Gaza. And we're here to actually escalate the struggle. We think that you know, students, workers, faculties should be out on every campus nationally. You know, there shouldn't be any rest until the bombs in, in Gaza, you know, actually stop. And we think that the truck struggle needs to be escalated against the actual system that's responsible for the genocide and oppression to begin with, which is U.S. imperialism. We think that there needs to be, um, uh, you know, people need to dump Genocide Joe, you know, uh, who's, you know, not only responsible for the genocide that's going on in Israel, mass war, but also the exploitative exploitation and oppression of the working class minorities and black people here at home. So we want to actually join you know, those struggles to actually create you know, working class opposition to this whole system that's responsible for the, uh, you know, the, the, I'm sorry, the annihilation, attempted annihilation, you know, of Palestine right now. So we think, you know, everybody should be out, out here calling for hands off Palestine, down with U.S. imperialism, down with Genocide Joe. We think that there is a working class alternative, you know, in these elections to actually vote for. You don't have to go for Biden. You don't have to go for, for Trump. You can actually vote, you know, for the PSL who's running in this, in, in these elections. Um, you know, our sign right there says it all. Support to Democrats, support to genocide. You know, vote for, for PSL. Come out and support, you know, the students, you know, are standing up against, you know, this genocide. And what do you think about when Biden and Democrats talk about the threat to democracy if Trump comes back into power? And we see what's happening on college campuses, students being attacked by, by police, uh, 
how is this democracy? Well, we, we think they're trying to pull the wool over the workers' eyes, over the, over the students' eyes, over all those that are oppressed by this racist capitalist system. Um, you know, to pretend like they're friends of the working people, they're friends of black people, or they're friends of, of the Palestinians, you know, when really what they do is actually smile in your face, stab you in the back, you know, get you to rope in, vote for them again in November. So the same status quo can keep going over and over and over. We say enough. Genocide Joe has got to go. Break with the Democrats. Vote for a working class alternative in these elections. And one more question. What do you think about the media's coverage? Uh, of the uh, uh, the college protest, you know, it seems that they they focus on the protest itself and not the reason why the students are actually protesting. You know, I think that the bourgeois media represents the bourgeoisie, and they're going to narrate their story to actually paint all of the protesters that are out here as anti-Semitic and you know, etc. They're out here to stop the genocide that was created by the U.S. bourgeoisie. You know? That's what needs to happen. Thought we fucking shot someone were the recorded text messages on a police officer's phone on Columbia University's campus Tuesday night and posted on Twitter. This was one of many officers who also denied all medical access to a student that they knocked unconscious. Two weeks after being arrested myself, and on the 56th anniversary of Columbia's brutal arrest of over 700 students protesting the Vietnam War and gentrification of Harlem, I was pushed and barricaded into John Jay by riot police, called onto campus by our administrators yet again. I watched as an EMT pleaded to be allowed to treat students, as police laughed and turned off their body cameras, and as press were prevented from bearing witness. Columbia and the cops collaborated to brutalize my classmates in the dark for standing up for what is right. The mainstream media is currently lying about outside detractors and overblowing property damage in order to justify brutality and distract from their complicity in genocide, just as they did with the civil rights movement, Black Lives Matter, and every other social movement for change. I was posting videos of the police throwing tables and breaking windows in real time yesterday. To be clear, the police caused far more property damage and physical endangerment than my classmates ever did. Shame! 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 There is not a single student-led uprising in history met with severe state-sanctioned violence that did not end up being right. Woo! Frankly, I am tired of press conferences performing Palestinian trauma to the American public. How many more children have to be trapped under the rubble of our bombs for you all to wake up? History will not look kindly upon you. Six-year-old Hind Rajab's name will be memorialized in textbooks and on Columbia's website one day. Her story is just one of the over 40,000 slaughtered Palestinians that we could not possibly name enough buildings after. As we speak, Israel is invading Rafah, a location it previously designated a safe zone. Last week, President Joe Biden sent $14.1 billion to fund more genocide. Yeah. To police brutality, we say we are not deterred and we will win. Colombia will divest. <laughs> to repression, we say our numbers will only grow. To state violence, we say we will become smarter, stronger, and better prepared to stand our ground. <laughs> to the Palestinian people, we recommit our love to you and affirm that our hope and will has never been stronger. <laughs> our people arrested yesterday will soon be free and ready to fight again with even greater insight into the oppressor. We, the students, will win. From Emory to Humboldt to CUNY, we will wage. Columbia University, once revered as a home for enlightenment and free speech, revealed its true nature. A willing accomplice to the genocidal agenda of Zionist terrorism. Guns were pointed at students. Hijabs ripped off of the heads of Muslims and bodies battered and beat by those who claim to serve and protect them. In the face of this relentless onslaught, we remain unbowed and unbroken. 
We have laid bare and exposed the complicity of Columbia University and the City University of New York in perpetrating war crimes and genocide, ex exposing the true nature of Zionism as a racist white supremacist ideology that employs terrorism to further its influence. The colonial capitalist state is targeting the student uprising because of how successful it has been, how principled and politically clear it has been in defense of Palestinian liberation. They have called out the horrors of genocide and the role of this government, our tax dollars, of U.S. imperialism in supporting and directly enacting this violence against the Palestinian people. This movement is growing and it is a threat to Zionism and to U.S. imperialism. The students have had enough of seeing their own institution's complicity in what is now over 75 years of settler colonial violence and dispossession in Palestine. The clarity, conviction, and determination of these students is what threatens this state, and it threatens capital, it threatens empire. As our Columbia uh, comrade earlier said, they are angry because they see they cannot break the students. The brilliance and courage of these students is what has inspired so many CUNY faculty who are here with us today um, and who have been um, present in the encampment um, throughout the six days. CUNY faculty and staff who have stood in solidarity and have joined the encampment as well as supported the encampment's five demands. But we cannot ignore the fact that this is no time to be smiling. Over 40,000 Palestinians have been murdered in Gaza in the past 207 days. That's right. And our country has been funding it. Yeah. Yeah. More specifically, our institutions and my school, CUNY, has been complicit in this genocide. And we've seen the news, everybody has seen it, and we know why we're here. We're here because we refuse to trade off Palestinian blood for our Zionist education. Political movement. This is a purely political movement. 